All right, here's a video on the Akai MPC 2000 XL versus the Akai MPC 1000 and why I picked which one I did to keep and which one I'm going to sell. So this is a fully loaded 2000 XL, not fully loaded, doesn't have a internal SCSI or the RAM upgrade, but it is fully loaded in that it has all the individual outs, the effects board, CF, CF drive, new screen from MPC stuff, and fat pads. So it's all there. There's no reason not to make amazing music on this. This 1000 is basically stock except the JJOS Excel operating system on it. So I've had a couple 2000s before, the classics, and I can say that the XL is way better. I would prefer to have the XL any day. Tilting screen, different features that are available. Very similar workflow, very similar footprint, very similar layout. So the 2000 Classic versus XL, I would pick XL any day. I think they sound the same. And as for the verses on this 2000 XL and the 1000, I am going to be selling the 2000 XL, which I never thought I'd do, and keeping the 1000. And I'll tell you why. The 1000, even though it's smaller, yeah, I could get a 2500, but I like the smaller footprint. I like it a lot, actually. The size of the XL is very professional and big and bulky and robust and everything's spaced out well and it's very, it just feels free and open when you come, when I come to start making a beat or something on this, it just feels more open and I, I don't know how to describe it other than being very open feeling like it's all there's nothing cramped here. You have lots of space. I don't know, space for what? I don't know, but that's just the impression I get when I turn this on to work with it. This, on the other hand, feels cramped, and I think that might start to subside after I use it more. We'll see. Just a few comparisons. The screen on the 1000 is superior. Not the screen itself, but the amount of information that it can show. It would be great if it tilted as well, swiveled up, that would be awesome, but it doesn't, so there we go. The 2000 screen's okay. It's good, you can see quite a bit on it. Pretty decent still. One slider on the 2000 XL, and two on the 1000. I like the sliders, so for me that's really a bonus. I like being able to play, able, able to play with them. In terms of pad sensitivity, I don't really notice a difference. I think they're pretty much the same to me. The tighter layout of the pads doesn't seem to bother me. The data wheel on the 1000 is a flat dish almost, and some people don't care for it. I like it. I think it's pretty good. A lot of people say that the 1000 feels like a toy. I didn't ever get that vibe. It's got a metal case, it's heavy, it's surprisingly heavy when you pick it up. I don't think there's anything toy-like about this other than maybe the, the interesting color pattern that they chose on it, the color scheme. These two both have CF drives, so there's no real benefit on either, except the 1000 you can hook up with, your, with the USB to your computer and manage the files, and that's a big deal for me. Also, the card capacity is higher. I've been able to get up to four gig working on this. People, I think, have said that they can get more. I haven't been able to get. Perhaps it's just a matter of getting the right card. This one, I've been able to get two gigs on that CF drive, which is amazing. Way better than zip, way better than floppies. You know, it's, it's so much better, but even just saving and managing files on the Excel, I don't like it as much as the 1000. I find it's, even without the USB, USB aside, 
it's just much easier for me to save and even scroll through the directory when loading something on the 1000. And the, let's go around the back here, the outputs. Like I mentioned, the Excel has the outboard, the individual output board installed. So it's got eight individual outputs and then two stereo. And the 1000 comes stock with six total outputs, four individual outputs and two stereo outputs. Now I thought this was going to be a bigger deal. Perhaps down the line it will be. Maybe I will kick my butt and say why did I sell the, the XL? Because I want to track out you know seven or eight individual tracks into my interface. But it really doesn't come up because the way that I work is I like to make beats on my MPC. I'm not really um, make, trying to make a whole track on it in terms of you know, chopping and everything. I make beats, these, these are basically beat machines for me. And that's another reason why maybe I don't need something so large is um, I make beats on it. So it's like a drum machine for me, a sampler drum machine for the most part. I, I do occasionally chop a little bit, but not much. I do that in my DAW, which I find is a, a much better way for me to do it. So yeah. I'll be selling the XL, I am actually selling it, and keeping the 1000. The aesthetics, I think the 1000, or the 2000 XL looks way better than this blue and red scheme. I really like the, the black, um, murdered out, I guess they call it, 1000. Maybe I'll do that one day. I doubt it though, because it, it just makes beats for me. and. It's got a wacky color scheme, but whatever. It makes, it produces results. So the other thing is the effects. Got a, maybe a few more things to mention here. The effects on the XL, this has the effects board. They're decent. I would much rather an XL or a classic with the effects. I actually like the distortion and the, the reverbs. It's decent in my opinion. The effects on this are that much better. I like the master compression and master EQ a lot. I think that adds a lot to the sound. It's amazing actually. And the operating system. I don't have much to compare with in terms of the stock Akai operating system because I upgraded to JJOS pretty quickly. But the operating system on the 1000 is superior in my opinion. I much prefer it gives a lot more control. It seems like it's a lot more um, immediately available. And it just seems like, um, well, it's partly JJOS, so it's, that's a little hard to say. But even the fact that you can upgrade it to JJOS is, again, another plus for the, for the 1000. What am I gonna miss about the XL? I'm gonna miss how it looks. If I'm gonna be honest, that's all I'm gonna miss. I think it looks amazing, it's such an icon. So iconic rather, but in terms of, you know, turning on a machine and making some music with it, I, I pick the 1000 pretty much every time it can sit on my lap. It goes in a backpack, um, sits well in the studio, has the same number of MIDI in outs. Um, a lot of people will say they love the sound of this better than the 1000. I'm not, I'm not feeling it. All the power to you if you love the, the classic and the 2000 XL, but uh, it's so funny because when I bought the, the 2000 classic way back in, I don't know, 96, 97, whatever it was, I was not impressed with the sound. And I, I, from what I understand, a lot of people weren't impressed with the sound at the time either. They thought it was a big step backward and actually pretty flat. But you add 20, 25 years and then it becomes that sound. It becomes vintage. So. It's all a matter of taste, yeah. I personally love how I can get this to sound with the effects and the master compressor, master EQ. This just has it all for me. I'm digging it. So there you go. I don't know if that will help you make a decision for yourself. I know there's a great renaissance for these right now. A lot of people are, there was a, a few years ago, 
you, you couldn't sell these for 300 bucks. You just couldn't. Not in my area. Now, kind of like records or tapes, they seem to, be, seem to be making a comeback. So there we go. That's the cycles and trends of outboard gear, I suppose. But yeah, I've landed on the 1000. And hopefully that makes you helps you make a decision as to what you want to buy next and whether or not you actually want to get into the hardware game. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.